You probably know former A's general manager Billy Bean best for the events depicted in 2011's Moneyball. Billy was one of the sport's first executives to embrace some of the modern ways of thinking about baseball, and in doing so, solidified his name in baseball history for the rest of time. Nearly 12 years after Scott Hatterberg's famous home run at the Coliseum, Billy Bean made a move that sounds insane at the surface. He acquired a major league pitcher for $1. Welcome back to Baseball Short Stories. Before we go on, I think some of you may like our first apparel line that we just launched with Teespring. The link you see on screen now can be found in the description below if you want to check it out. Also, most of you watching aren't subscribed, so if at any point you decide you'd like more of these kinds of videos in your life, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Let's get back to the story. With a wallet tighter than your grandfather after a Fernando Tatis Jr. bat flip, the Oakland Athletics have had to get creative with their finances in years past. You can't really get much more creative than acquiring a pitcher for a dollar, and thankfully for the A's, who were short a pitcher after Drew Pomeranz got into a fight with his favorite chair, they got a bargain. Whether you measure it by on-the-field success, or how often he was on the field at all, left-handed pitcher Brad Mills didn't have much luck up to this point in his career. With only 15 games and 53 and a third innings of work over the first four years of his career, Mills found himself stuck in the minor leagues in 2014, and hadn't pitched in a major league game since July 8th of 2012 with the Angels. In 2011, the Angels sent Jeff Mathis to the Blue Jays for Brad Mills straight up, for one game of his time. After being stuck in the minor leagues for quite some time, Mills started pitching really well in AAA Nashville in 2014, now with the Milwaukee Brewers. A 1.56 ERA and a whip under 1 in 12 starts was by far the best he had ever pitched at the AAA level, and that's when he found out that the Brewers were trading him to the Oakland A's, for $1. I'm sure it hurt his confidence a bit after he found out it costed Oakland less to acquire him than it would to acquire a small fry at McDonald's, but it probably stung a lot less after his agent told him this. You see, $1 transactions aren't as uncommon as you might think. They don't happen that frequently, but it's not something that's unheard of. When a team basically gives up on a player, they can choose to either release him and see him sign with another team anyway, or they can trade him and try to get something in return. Sometimes that return is decent, and sometimes that return is 100 pennies. In typical fashion, the Mets somehow found a way to be negatively affected by this move, as Mills marched into Citi Field in his second start with the A's, and tossed six and a third innings, giving up three runs in an 8-5 A's win. Now, if you happen to be a major league executive watching this with a dollar to spare, is there any evidence that window shopping for these so-called dollar dogs is some kind of secret success? From what I've been able to find online, there have only been a few of these types of moves in the recent past. The Brewers traded catcher Will Nieves to the Braves for a buck in 2011, the Rangers sent Ernesto Frieri to the Mariners in 2017 for the same amount, and the Phillies did it with Wes Helms and sent him to the Marlins in 2008. The most successful of these three was Wes Helms. While accumulating negative 1.8 B-War over this time frame, Helms did actually play a lot in his final four seasons with the Marlins before retiring. The clear standout, though, in the cases I found was reliever Tony Zick. Two years before pulling off the aforementioned Frieri deal, the Mariners acquired Zick in 2015 for $1. The Cubs had given up on him after an unsuccessful four-year career in their minor league system. Zick started with Seattle's AA team, putting up a 2.16 ERA in 16 and two-thirds innings, a 3.41 in 31 and two-thirds innings at AAA, and the stats you can see on your screen now over the next three seasons with a major league team. In the time he spent healthy, Zick was actually pretty good, especially for the price. Injury, though, led to his downfall. He dealt with a shoulder injury that made him the first major league player in history to get a specific type of shoulder surgery, it caused him to miss out on a lot of playing time, and the Mariners would later release him in 2018. But not before he proved that the dollar deal should not be put to rest. The case of Billy Bean and Brad Mills wasn't the first, and it wasn't the last. Mills unfortunately didn't find any of the success that Zick did at the major league level, but hey, 16 and a third innings for the price of a dollar still sounds pretty good to me. Before we go, I'd like to give some quick shoutouts, first to Sadman Baseball, who helped me with some of the visuals in the recent Meet the Wilpons video. He released a video on spring training that I'm actually in, as it was based on the trip we took to Florida back in March. It's leaps and bounds better than this video, so if you enjoyed this one at all, I really think you'll like that one. I think he has the most impressive baseball content on the platform by far, and you'll see why for yourself if you go check him out. Next to Jolly Olive, who did a reaction vid to that same Meet the Wilpons video on his channel the other day. He's a good friend of mine and an up-and-coming baseball content creator, so make sure to go check out that video as well. Both of these will be linked down in the description below. That's all I got for today, so thank you very much for watching. You can be on the lookout for a bigger video from me based on one of my favorite first basemen of all time in the coming weeks, and I'll see you then. Thanks, guys. I need
Dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. I need. 